Happy Monday, everyone. Uh, as you know, on Patreon, patreon.com slash Taylor Jackson, I put up a new video specifically for business marketing advice every single Monday. Uh, today, there's actually no video, but I've uploaded my Lightroom presets, my official beta for my 2019 presets that will be coming out in a month or so. Uh, I'm basically just uh, still refining it. They're pretty much like, I would say, nine tenths done. Um, but Patreon members will get the full official presets once they're released as well. So if you want to get the beta for now, uh, feel free to tweak away, make them whatever you want them to be. Uh, but at some point in January, I'm going to be uploading uh, the official finals. So if you're a Patreon member, you get them for free. So uh, so sign up, I guess, today uh, officially because they're, they're online right now. Uh, if you want them, uh, head over there. So today's episode, I'm going to be talking not specifically just about my presets, um, though I do use mine a lot. So I guess I have a lot of good things to say about them. Um, if you purchased, you can search on Google for Taylor Jackson Lightroom presets. Um, my last year is my 2018. I have used pretty much my summer 18 cool preset on pretty much every wedding that I've processed since I would say August. Uh, what I do, so I guess I like to kind of bring this back a little bit to my, my thoughts and overall just ideas of presets. My, my greatest idea of what I want my preset to do or what I want any preset to do, uh, whatever one is correct for you, is to essentially be able to just place that on every single photo from a shoot or from a wedding or from whatever. And I want it to be ready to go. I don't want to have to go through and select like, oh, these are all the shots in fluorescent lights and these are all the shots outside and these are all the shots backlit and add something specific to each of them. I really do just want to be able to add one single preset to every single image and have it pretty much final at that point. Um, if you listen to my outsourcing episode or if you're a member of Patreon and you've kind of listened to my entire outsourcing walkthrough, uh, what I do is I get my images back from my post processor and I just ask them to do like a, just a generic boring vanilla edit that is just technically correct for white balance, for exposure, shadows, uh, black point, all of that. And then I make a preset based on kind of what is wrong with it. So if it comes back and everything's a little bit too cool, I just make my preset a little bit warmer and then I add to that. Um, one, I guess, hidden feature that not everyone's aware of is that if you want to do a global white balance shift, which means that if you have just a bunch of images that you want to increase the white balance just a little bit, but you don't want to make it a specific white balance, you just want to make it warmer, you don't want to make it specifically like 8,000 Kelvin. Um, if you were to sync everything, if you were to set like a photo to 8,000, whatever, and then sync it in the develop module, everything will sync and it will all be 8,000. But if you are in the library mode, um, which nobody I think ever really uses, if you are in library mode, um, you can select all the images and click the little the little plus, or uh, I guess it's an arrow left or a double arrow um, left to make everything a little bit cooler or the other way to make things a little bit warmer. Um, so hopefully that just blew your mind. Um, it kind of blew my mind whenever I figured it out. Uh, but it's, um, it's a good place that you can do global adjustments that don't make it a specific value. So same with exposure, if you want, like if everything, for instance, comes back from my post-processor and everything is a little bit too dark and I wanna just bump up the exposure by like 0.3 on every single photo, um, regardless if, if it is currently at like a 1.0 or a 1.33 or 1.66 or whatever it is, um, in library mode, you can do that global adjustment to bump everything up just a little bit. Um, so that's uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the tip of the day. So back to, presets in Lightroom. Um, whenever I'm adding my preset, I just figure out whatever I need to kind of make up for in that specific gallery. And I will make a custom preset. And that is usually based on me actually just applying the preset to one photo and uh, moving sliders until it gets to be exactly what I want. And then at that point, syncing everything through. Um, and the way that I sync is I sync, but I don't um, touch the exposure. I don't touch the white balance. I don't touch any of the black points, anything like that. So if you are using my um, my summer 18 cool preset, that does adjust kind of those, um, the, the core sliders, which is like the exposures and, and white points and everything. But whenever I'm doing, um, when my images come back from my post processor, I'm just using every element of that preset that is not um, that specific like exposure panel. And um, beyond that, so I I guess my journey with presets was began way back in, um, in Photoshop where they used to be called actions. So I apologize, I kind of use the terms interchangeably um, just because of the way my brain is programmed. And 
I started using a lot of actions that added specific elements to photos. So they didn't necessarily do like a full tonal shift or split tone. Um, but what, what they would do was like, if you wanted to make that like really nice, like warm backlit flare, um, that there'd be an action, you click that button and it would go through and it would process and it would do that. Uh, and it would look pretty legitimate most of the time. Uh, there's still some, some of my past work that I have some fake suns in and fake lighting that actually does seem legitimate. Um, I've kind of stopped doing that now. I think that whatever is happening on the day, I want that to be the image that the couple remembers because it's kind of, it's kind of weird to influence the day in a way that makes it not actually what the wedding day was or the the shoot day was. Um, if you are shooting commercially and you're shooting like, and you need a specific look, know that there are a lot of things you can do in Photoshop if you plan them right and execute them right on set or on um, in the actual shoot. Because uh, when you get back, if you if you know that you need to composite into like this exact this exact frame, you can set that up and make it pretty much perfect and undetectable. Um, whereas if you're trying to figure it out in post production, you're like, oh, like they want they want it to be like a, an evening time shot now. And we were there in the middle of the day. Um, at that point, it becomes pretty hard and you can't really do a whole lot. Um, but there are there are lots of options and in, in Photoshop and it's um, it's something that I don't think a lot of photographers really even use anymore. And I feel like a lot of people get kind of pride over like, yeah, I don't, I don't ever touch Photoshop. And, uh, I usually don't unless I have, like have something specific that I need to do. Um, Photoshop is a much more powerful tool than Lightroom when it comes to specific, um, image manipulation rather than kind of global adjustments. But hopefully if you're shooting everything right in camera as you should be, and you don't have to remove too many elements or too many complex elements or um, tone skin too much, um, hopefully you're staying mostly in Lightroom because it is a much more efficient tool. So my presets began as actions. Um, we used to use like totally rad actions, which is kind of going way back now. Um, I then discovered a photographer in the UK. His name is Jeff Askoff. He's still a great photographer doing great things. And uh, he came up with these really, really nice, like warm black and white um, Lightroom actions. And I used the heck out of those for an ex extreme amount of time. That was pretty much my black and white. And th like those those actions, those presets were so good that it really influenced how I actually photographed um, that I pretty much went from being somebody that photographed exclusively in color with maybe one or two black and whites to being somebody that was like almost 50 50 split because of how good they were and how good that they made images look. Um, I also was always um, super aware of at that time I was doing a lot of albums. So whenever albums came back, if there were selects in them that I was just like, noticing like, okay, so this entire album is all black and white. So maybe I'm on the right track. Or if everything came back, and it was all color, I would be like, okay, so maybe I need to dial uh, black and whites back. I'm really just kind of reacting to whatever's happening kind of in, in my localized market, I guess. Um, so after leaving kind of those and actually getting into Lightroom, which was, it was sad whenever you couldn't use Lightroom, it took a long time or you could use Aperture if you had a Mac, but I didn't. Um, so you're processing photos individually in Photoshop, which was a bit of a pain. Um, I eventually moved into um, the Visco presets. They were, uh, I guess, like the first ones that I actually purchased. And well, I absolutely love some of them it's kind of overwhelming whenever you download like a Visco pack and there's like 150 or like 300 um, different styles of film in there that I really just like want the two or three that actually look the best. Um, and I found that whenever um, that I was kind of modifying and making my presets based on those in the very beginning, because it got me to like 80% of the way that I wanted to have my images look and I had to go in and kind of refine from there. Um, so maybe that's a, that's a tip to you that if, if you are struggling, like finding like the preset to really do, uh, just like spend some time. Like I spend pretty much like my entire year refining mine, uh, to get to a point that I'm happy with it. And even when I'm happy with it, I'm only like 98% happy with it. And then some situations doesn't work at all. Um, that's why I do have a few presets because every, one of them will work pretty much in every situation. Um, but spend some time, find one that's pretty good, pretty close to what you want to do and just go in and, and change things around or refine it. Um, from there, I found that, um, develop D V L O P. Um, their presets are very, very good. If you're a wedding shooter, um, they, they just handle skin tones really well. And also the science behind. So if you get a Visco preset, at least to my knowledge now, you get like the single preset and that's what it is. You click the button, it does a thing. Um, with develop DVLOP, uh, what it does is that within 
depending on which camera you're actually using, it will adjust things dependent on that. So you have a profile, um, a developed profile for like your Nikon D850. And if you're using your D850, uh, it will process the image in a little bit of a different way um, than if you were using a Canon uh, like 5D4. Uh, so it's, it's really kind of interesting in that way that it actually does pay attention to which camera you're using. Cause I don't know if you've ever purchased presets from somebody and you're like, wow, these just don't work like even at all. I have no idea how they even achieve the images that they get using these presets. Um, option one is that maybe they're lying that they don't actually use them because they don't want to give away something that's that core to their business. Um, option two is that if they're shooting Canon and their like camera profile is just like really, really magenta, that maybe they've corrected for that and it's making your images a little bit wacky because um, you don't have that same magenta shift as um, somebody shooting a specific different type of camera. So my advice is really find find one or two or three presets that really do uh, that you enjoy, that you like to to see that look on everything and really do start using them and start refining them to be exactly perfect to your camera, the way that you shoot. If you shoot warm in camera and you want to do something to it in post, uh, that you can kind of make those custom adjustments rather than relying on somebody else just to make a blanket preset for you. Uh, because I really am like all year refining mine to make it better and better and better. Uh, also, I guess maybe just another general tip, kind of like the one earlier, that um, Lightroom does get better and better with every iteration. So if you are only saving the JPEGs of like your old files that are like your favorite photos ever and you're not saving the raw files, save the raw files because you can reprocess them um, like specifically like noise reduction and all kinds of different elements have really gotten amazing since I started using Lightroom. And that if I'm re-importing those files from like forever ago uh, from like a D700 into Lightroom now, it's going to give me a way better output than it was giving me like 10 years ago when I was using that camera and trying to do some things that were maybe on like the limits of Lightroom's abilities at that point. Um, so keep backups of like JPEGs and keep backups of like your portfolio shots in raw format as well. Um, if you want to find a way to kind of like, I guess, save space, if you don't want to have 150 hard drives laying around like I do, um, what you can do is whenever you're kind of finished with a shoot, you can convert everything to DNG format, get Adobe uh, DNG converter, and you can make the images a lot smaller in file format, um, but still retain a lot, I would say like 90% plus, maybe even 100% of the actual data in the image. Um, but just by using the DNG converter, you just downsize the file significantly. Um, and same goes with JPEG mini. If you're saving JPEGs, uh, that I really noticed absolutely no quality difference between, uh, an image that's been run through JPEG mini and is like 1.2 megabytes rather than the original image that was like 6.4. So, um, two things to kind of look out for. So yeah. Um, if you are a Patreon member, my, Beta presets are up right now. You are welcome to get them, uh, use them however you want. Uh, don't resell them. But other than that, um, you're able to use them on your photos, whatever you want to do. So thank you for listening today. And I will uh, I will talk to you tomorrow because that's how this uh, this daily podcast works from, from Japan, from Tokyo. I'll see you tomorrow.